About two weeks ago, we have started the beta release of Tutup.io with a few beta testers and it has been going really nice so far and I'm happy to announce that we will release the first public version of Tutup.io very soon, probably in a few days. I will make another video here on YouTube when it's time. And today I just want to give you another quick update about the current state of the project, what features I've implemented and so on, so you know what you're up to then in a few days. And the same as for my previous project, Engage a lot, I'm using the MERN stack here because it has worked nicely so far for me and I really like it. MERN stands for MongoDB, which is the database. This is where we store all the data, for example, these resources and the users and so on. The E stands for Express, which is a server framework. This handles the code that yeah, gets this data out of the database to the front end, basically together with the N in MERN, which stands for Node. So Node and Express work together. And the letter R stands for React. React is a JavaScript framework with which I built this whole website. So what you can actually see here, excluding the data, which is coming from the MongoDB database. So that's the MERN stack. I'm a fan of it. It has worked great so far for me. Besides that, I'm using, of course, some more libraries, just small stuff that you need. For example, I use React Bootstrap which is a UI framework that helps make the website look better than when you try to do it all yourself. For example, these cards here are coming from Bootstrap. This pop-up menu is coming from Bootstrap, these buttons and so on. And what Bootstrap also really helps with is making the website responsive, which was something I was scared of at first because yeah, it's difficult to support different screen sizes without it looking weird. But Bootstrap actually makes this pretty easy. So when I make this window here smaller, you can see that the, the filter sidebar moves to the top because there's not enough vertical space. The results are below it. And when we make it even smaller, you can see how these cards here shrink. And the, the text here that shows the user who submitted the resource and the date actually moves to a line below the, the other data here. I think this is really uh, a nice behavior. And yeah, uh, Bootstrap actually makes this really easier. And it works by providing different kind of containers where you can put your stuff in. For example, you can have columns and rows. And when you have a row where stuff is next to each other, it will automatically move the different parts below each other if there is not enough uh, horizontal space. This is basically how it works. And this is much easier than trying to do all of this yourself with CSS and breakpoints. And one more thing I'm using is Redis, which is a very popular in-memory database. And the benefit of Redis is that it's super fast because it's yeah, in the memory. It doesn't have to be loaded from somewhere else, if I understand this correctly. And to be exact, I use this for session management. So when a user logs in, the session data is stored in Redis. And then a cookie is set in the browser and disconnects the the browser to the current session. And I was using JWT token at first, but I actually learned that they are not good for session management because they are stateless, which is a problem when we need to rerogue a session. For example, when the user changes their password, we want to lock them out everywhere else. This is not possible out of the box with JWT, but with session management libraries like Express Session, which I'm using here, this is possible because the, the second half of the session data, one half is stored in the cookie, the other half is stored in the Redis database. And if we delete the entry in the Redis database, then the session is gone. And again, this is important, for example, when the user changes their password, because we need to lock them out everywhere else. Before we talk about the remaining features I've implemented here, I wanna talk about Hostinger, which is the web hosting I'm using. And they are also sponsoring this video. So they uh, were so nice to provide me uh, with free hosting, which of course is really nice. And I've been really happy with them. No problem so far. I didn't notice the server or the website being down ever. Uh, so I recommend that if you wanna build your own website, for example, a practice website or a real startup, that you use hosting as well, because yeah, they have really competitive prices, but the service is great. For a website, for example, a React website like I have, or also a WordPress website, or whatever other platform you wanna use to build it with, you uh, wanna use the web hosting here, the shared web hosting. And here you can see the, the features of the different pricing plans. 
I think the premium plan has the best bang for the buck. This is also what I'm using here. But even in the single plan, we get a lot of really important features here. For example, all of them contain a free SSL certificate. The SSL certificate is what makes a website HTTPS instead of HTTP. This is how we get this little lock icon here in the top left corner, which is important because otherwise Google will or Chrome will warn the Chrome user before visiting the website. You probably notice a message like, do you really want to go here? This website is not secure. And then there's a big fat button to go back. You of course don't want to have this on your website. So they provide this free SSL certificate with their different plans. And the installation is also very easy. You basically just select the URL and click install and that's basically it. The rest happens automatically. Another feature that's very important if you want to build a business are proper email addresses where you don't have gmail.com at the end or something like that because this is very unprofessional but actually the domain of your website. For example, for 2tab.io, I have different email addresses, Florian at 2tab.io, support at 2tab.io and so on. Of course you want this and Hostinger includes these email accounts with their different pricing plans as well. And they also have a whole inbox client on the back end, so you don't need to connect this with anything else. Feature-wise, it's very similar to Gmail, it's awesome, and you can read and write and use all your email stuff directly in this backend, so you don't have any complicated setup. Yeah, and of course you need a domain for your website. This is why I prefer the premium plan. It includes a free domain, and the premium plan also has just better values overall than the single plan, like different email accounts and so on. So this is why I think it has the best bang for the buck. So this is where the React website is hosted on. Besides the web hosting, I also have VPS hosting. This is what you need to host a web server because it needs a different kind of hosting, different kinds of resources. Here I have VPS too. Again, I'm really happy with it. There were no problems with the uptime. The server was always available. And this is basically where you deploy your Node code on. If you build your server in Node, of course, you can also build it with another language and framework. So let's say, for example, we pick the shared web hosting. As you can see, we have nice discounts available here. The price is really uh, awesome. You can select your payment method. You see all the features you uh, get. And you can actually get an even bigger discount by using my coupon code, which is coding and flow. And I will also put a link to a hostinger and my coupon port, coupon port, coupon code in the description box. So we type in coding in flow. We apply this and we get an even bigger discount. So for 40 bucks for 12 months of hosting and a domain and SSL certificate, you can't really do anything wrong. I think the price is amazing. But of course, you're also welcome to choose a higher duration. Then you have locked in this price with this discount for a longer time. Again, I'm really happy with Hostinger. The back end of Hostinger is also really nice. So if you have a hosting plan there, then this is how you manage it. Basically, you can choose a server location depending where you and your users live. Different locations make more sense. As you can see, you can also change this. You have all the features like email and so on available here. It's really optimized from WordPress as well. So WordPress installation is easier, but deploying a React website is also easy. I showed this in a previous video in more detail. You basically just go into the file manager and extract your website uh, files into a folder. And that's basically it. And this is how the backend for the VPS hosting looks. VPS hosting again is for the server. So in my case, that's Node Express server that communicates between the React website and the MongoDB database. Again, you can choose a location. You can choose an operating system. There are different ones available, either with a control panel or without. Without means that you, uh, you do all the work over the command line and it's more difficult at first, but I found that most tutorials online actually use the command line. So I picked Ubuntu 18.04 in my case, OS only without a control panel. And they have some really uh, useful features that saved me in the past, for example, snapshots and backups. Before I go in the command line and make any changes or update uh, code from GitHub on my server, I always make a snapshot here. And I've used this before because when all of this was new for me, especially I crashed my server or I broke my server a lot of time by doing mistakes. But then I just had to click restore here and everything was reset to the point of the snapshot. Worked amazingly well, works fast and it can really save you. 
another really nice feature is resetting the firewall because on your server you want to set up a firewall for security reasons but if you do it wrongly it can happen that you lock yourself out and i think this happened to me as well then you just click the reset button and the firewall is basically disabled and you can get back into your server and enable the firewall with the correct settings again so yeah that's the vps backend and also one thing i really like is that the the ui of hosting is clean i had a different hosting provider in the past and there everything was hard to find there were a lot of moving parts on the website that popped in and out of existence which made it really annoying to work with it hostinger the backend is fast intuitive it's not overloaded with too many uh, too much information most of the stuff here you can uh, get what it's for right away yeah check out hostinger okay and now let's take another look at the website itself again because there's still some nice stuff i want to show you as you can see now we not only have the count for the total number of results but also for the different filters which is really useful and really important i think because i want to know how many paid tutorials are there in the results that i don't want to check this and then see zero because there are no paid resources for the search query for example again i implemented this using mongodb they have different operators that let us get and show this information and these numbers also change when i apply different filters for example, right now we have nine different results and for the type we also have nine of course, nine different results in total, three, one and five. If I now select video, this shouldn't be nine anymore because I have this filter selected and now I only want to see the different types of resources that fit to the video format. So if I select video, you can see that the five changed to three because there are only seven total results available with this filter applied and these other ones here also have seven as the total number yeah this works really nicely then also of course very important pagination now there are not many resources in the database yet because we were only in the beta phase with very few users but if i search for all results which i can do with an asterisk sign just because the way search is implemented then i will see all results which are at the moment are 30 here and of course we want to paginate them because if we later have thousands of resources we don't want to show thousands of them on the page at once and we also don't want to load thousands out of the database at once this would take a lot of time instead we chunk them into different pages at the moment the page size is 10 so yeah when i select page 2 i go to the next page and show the next 10 or 12 resources i don't know the exact number right now so yeah the, the pagination indicator down here is also an element from react bootstrap so this is where the design comes from of course the, the behavior the functionality the logic that paginates the results still has to be implemented by us but bootstrap provides the ui element yeah the detail screen and the submit and edit resource screen i already showed that earlier what was missing last time was the bookmarks functionality which is working now so we can bookmark a resource and then we can see it in our profile so the ui and the design of course is not great yet it's very minimalistic at uh, right now but i want to keep it like this on purpose because i want to release the first version of this website as quickly as possible so i don't want to focus too much on the design for now we will do this in the next few weeks and months of course i can unbookmark resources and all the other stuff works in here as well and i also implemented the most important security features because even if it's just an mep of course the website has to be secure i don't want it to be hacked or and i don't want it to be uh, taken down with something like ddos attacks where you just do a ton of requests in a very fast manner in order to cripple the server and of course i also don't want user accounts to be hacked by uh, hacking their passwords so i implemented some stuff for example rate limiting for which i'm using the express rate limit package right now it's very intuitive to use which is what i like so we create these different middlewares for the different endpoints for example we have rate limiting for creating and updating resources because i don't want someone to spam my database with a ton of resources just to troll me for, uh, basically so this right now is 20 per hour i, s I still want to play around with this and fine-tune this but i don't think anyone will provide more than 20 resources in one hour even if they have a lot prepared so i think this is fine for an hour login is also important because you don't want someone to brute force passwords right so here it's 10 attempts per 
24 hours. We will try this out in a moment. But what's interesting here is I have this skip successful request property, which is a feature of this package. And this way it doesn't count successful login attempts because of course you want to be able to log in and out of your account how often you want in a day without this being rate limited. But let's actually try out the login rate limit to see this in action. So I've opened the website in an incognito tab and it doesn't matter if you use a real email or username or just a random one, it will apply the rate limit if you have too many login attempts, even if the account doesn't actually exist, because this way we avoid that people just try out uh, different combinations to figure out which accounts exist. This is information we usually don't want to expose to the outside. So this will kick in even if the account doesn't exist. So ASD123, type in a random password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now it should fail. Yeah, and we get this error message here. Of course, I should show a better error message in the future, which we show actually on the screen instead of this pop-up. But this is the rate limiting coming into effect. Now we can't even try to log in anymore, even with the correct credentials. And we have to wait 24 hours before this will work again. The same is the case for the forgot password feature, which I've also implemented. You can only do this a few times before you will be uh, blocked for 24 hours because you could spam a user this way, a user's email address, if this wasn't rate limited. You can do this three times per day before you will be uh, locked. I think more is really not necessary. And the reset password feature actually works. So we can type in our email address, click the button and we get an email to reset our password. And I've also implemented email verification the same way. So when a user signs up on the website, the account will be created, but they cannot do certain, uh, certain things before they verify the email. Let's actually try this out. Let's call the user 12345. I will delete this later. And 123 at 123.com. Random password. I create this account. The account gets created and we immediately see this. Please verify your email notification here. And when we try to, for example, submit a resource, we will see the same dialog again. If we didn't get the email for some reason, we can resend it here. Again, this is limited, so we don't send too many at once. Yeah, and I think the website is pretty secure. It's not easy, actually. You can do some stuff wrong, but I've implemented all the necessary steps that there shouldn't be any obvious reasons to hack it. Yeah, this is the state of the website so far. Again, we will release it very soon, in a few days probably. I will make another short video on YouTube when the time comes. Of course, there are still a lot of features that I want to implement in the future that I haven't yet. I want to implement community features like writing comments, maybe even a whole forum later. Uh, karma points that you get when you provide resources, vote resources and so on. But for the first version, it's just too complicated to do all of this right at the beginning because then I would have to postpone the release forever, which is not the idea behind an MVP. And yeah, of course, I want to thank all beta testers who helped testing the early version of the website. We got a lot of really important insights there. And then stay tuned for my release announcement in a few days. And have a nice rest of your day and happy coding. Take care.